Hello and welcome to another MVP, which everyone knows stands for Most Valuable Podcast Episode <laughs> of We Only Look Thin. I am one of your hosts, uh, Touchdown Donnie Weigel, and <laughs> I am here. Uh, I lost about 100 pounds and uh, I'm here to talk about it. And with me as always is... Halftime Catherine Weigel <laughs> Snack Time. Hi, I'm Catherine Halftime snack time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, it is. It was. Which we'll talk about. Hi, I'm Catherine Weigel. I have lost over 100 pounds. I am your co host. I am a Tiny Habits certified coach. Yeah. And I live the experience of weight loss every day. Every day. Here to share weight loss and weight gain. <laughs> and weight gain every yeah. day here. Every day. On this podcast, we only look thin. Hi there and hello. Hello. And uh, we are this week week uh, going to talk a little bit about the Super Bowl, which happened very recently. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, when it comes out, it happened very recently yeah. and even more recently as we record this. <laughs> yeah, and it's probably the biggest football event in the world. Probably. Probably. Yes. If we think <laughs> of football Definitely in America, the Super Bowl is the a Philadelphia's thing. played the Kansas City's, and um, I assume there was a game happening while I was eating food. Yes. Uh, so yeah. So we are here to talk about recovering and resetting after Super Bowls of food. Yeah. Uh, which is basically what happened uh, that weekend, long, long ago. Yeah, and and look, we uh, we had planned on having uh, an indulgent calorie day on Super Bowl Sunday, um, so it wasn't it wasn't a big surprise. But what sort of was a surprise was uh, sort of the night before um, we kind of uh, talked ourselves into also eating dinner out because we went to see a play. Yeah, a very romantic play. A <laughs> romantic A play. romantic rom-com called... That's right. Called Misery. Misery. Stephen King's Misery in, in play live action right in front of us form. Yeah, yes. it was delightful. It was very romantic and... Uh, it actually was very good. It was uh, good. Uh, but, uh, you know, not not a comedy for those who might not know. Yeah. No, spoiler alert. Not, yeah. not super romantic. Rom. Not romantic, actually. <laughs> and not, not calm either. Although I guess, you know, if you're if you're <laughs> oh sort my of gosh. a psycho stalker, maybe. <laughs> All right. That's hopefully not who we're attracting here. At we yeah, only hopefully look not. thin. But we uh, initially wanted to talk about resetting and recovering after one specific day, like the Super Bowl. But again, like Donald said, our Super Bowl went into a two-day uh, food activities. Donald might have done a little bit better than I. I did, uh, but this I is... wasn't going to say it. But <laughs> since you brought it up, oh, you brought it up earlier when we were talking about the episode. No, but if you go away for a weekend, if you have an indulgent uh, day planned, or even if you are coming back from vacation, it is not necessarily the event itself that is troublesome, but rather what we do the day after. And uh, this this episode was written from my own experience. Yeah, uh, and look, uh, I. I, I did I did what I think was pretty well overall uh, between the night before and the Super Bowl in terms of of staying on calories. And then I, I really did get right back on it the next day and was super solid the rest of the week. But I have spent many, many, many times getting to a place like the Super Bowl, you know, where I was like on a diet in air quotes. I don't you know, we don't go on diets at this point. But I'd be on a diet, I would have an event like the Super Bowl come up, and then I would just use that as an excuse or see see it as failure, you know, and that I would just be like, well, I guess I can't do it. And so I'm just going to stop entirely. Yeah. So uh, Donald had a great Super Bowl weekend, but I like investing in let's just personal... Say, let's just say good. Okay. Let's just say good. All right. <laughs> so he had a great uh, Super Bowl event. <laughs> You can't tell me what to say. I went over my calories. I just I feel like I didn't go absolutely bananas and then I I I broke even on the scale between uh, during the week. I ended up like basically the same weight 
at the end of the week as I was when I started. Yep, so that is the end of the episode. Donald did awesome, and I didn't. All right, so some of you might be like Donald Weigel, and you're able to recover immediately after the day. But I would like to take you down the Catherine Weigel uh, part of the story, uh, which I guess I'm not really comfortable talking about myself in the third person, but I guess maybe this is just (laughs) what I do now. You know, you say you're not comfortable, but you're doing it a lot. I seem comfortable. Yeah. So here was my experience. And dear listener, if this is your experience and you're like me, it is okay. So we went out to eat on Saturday night, which again, I went over, but uh, it was fine. It's a once in a lifetime. We'll talk about those uh, magical thoughts in another episode. Yeah. Super Bowl, I planned it in advance. I knew it was coming. We, uh, We had special food that we had already planned. It was good. But here's the thing. The next day after eating so much, I was starving the next, I mean, starving, you know, Yeah. relatively speaking. I was really hungry and I wanted to go back into a deficit immediately. Didn't go super great. And I went over my calories and I was really, I was disappointed in myself. I was like, oh, I already planned for this. Why isn't this working? So I, uh, I, I sort of worked on this episode as my own research for how I might be able to address setbacks moving forward, because we have an opportunity to learn from setbacks and not just feel like we're failures. Well, and can I just, you know, just to be fair and be completely frank with our audience, you know, I, I was sick for, for close to two months uh, between December and January. Yeah. And I am currently probably in the neighborhood of 10 or 12 pounds heavier than I would uh, I would really like to be. Me too. And uh, so I, just because I am currently, you know, on track and, and doing, you know, what I feel like is a, a great job, it doesn't mean that I haven't also had <laughs> things come up. Um, you know, I spent, uh, I, I was sick for about, three, four weeks and then felt better for about a week and then got sick again. Yeah. And, and it, you know, really wrecked me. But, um, I, uh, so I'm not claiming to be perfect (laughs) and I definitely, you know, the scale right now is, is showing that I am far from perfect, but I am, uh, it is a process and a, a lifelong process. And uh, that's part of what we're here to talk about. It is. So in the past, I would have, and again, in the past, uh, the Monday after the, the past, Super Bowl. It was like a week ago. <laughs> a week ago. Um, I assumed that I would get right back into a deficit and it didn't go well. So I sort of did some journaling, wrote some things down, which I uh. usually don't do, but sort of really broke apart what might be a bad idea in terms of mindset, activity, food, and the scale uh, in the before times, and then how a healthy practice of a growth mindset might differ in terms of how you manage a setback. So uh, we are going to invoke the We Only Look Thin Players once again. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Where we are going to do a little riff raffing on, uh, on sort of setting up a stage play for you of what what an old mindset would have looked like and what a new mindset looks like. And like Donald said, setbacks are normal before we get started. It's not proof that you're broken when you get back from a holiday or you overindulge on a weekend. Um, There's no before and after version of ourselves. It's not like, well, but I've lost all this weight. Like, that was before me. Now the new me shouldn't do this. We're still the same people and we have the same challenges and more challenges are coming again. I just found out, again, when we're recording this, I found out that Mardi Gras is on Tuesday. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Uh, yeah, there's you have no choice but to. Uh, it's Inception. To, I didn't even think about pancakes until I said to that. To create, uh, make some beignets at home or something. Right, but this whole process is a continuum, and the more we, the more evidence and the more mindset we put toward the healthier practices and the growth mindset, the more you know on the scoreboard is there's a scoreboard in football, right? Yes, okay. there is a scoreboard. The more yes. the winner is the one just yelling. Yeah, there, there is a winner. There yes. is a winner. <laughs> All you need is like a couple more kicks, and right. then you get the you get the win. Right, a couple more kicks. That's a couple how it more works. kicks. Yeah. So this is more about the preponderance than a hundred percent perfect all the time. But uh, in this stage play that we are going to produce for you uh, right now, uh, Donald 
is going to be Mr. Bad Idea. <laughs> yes, I'll be I'll be Donnie Bad Idea, Mr. Donnie Bad Idea. Uh, ordinarily, okay. uh, as I as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, my real life persona is Donnie Touchdown. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but I will be playing Donnie Bad Idea. Yeah, and I will be a healthy practice Kathy. There. <laughs> I don't even like saying. Oh my god, it was so hard for you to Uh, say Kathy. Oh my goodness, that was no, no dissing anyone named Kathy. Healthy practice, Kathy. I'll be the growth mindset version. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And before, uh, before we actually start, uh, our our bravura acting performances, Uh um, uh, we are going to talk about uh, mindset, activity, food, and the scale, and And, then the results, and and the sort of bad ideas. (laughs) Look, we don't like to put moral judgments on ideas, but bad ideas and good ideas. We're just going to do it. Yeah, Um, unhelpful ideas, unhelpful ideas, and um. Uh, you know, the sort of the old us versus the the current us and how we deal with these things. Okay, so act one, scene one, mindset. <laughs> <laughs> Location, Donald's brain. <laughs> oh man, we and- don't we don't want to go in there. It's it's just you know how like like for some people it's like a monkey with symbols. Yes. For me, it's like a monkey eating a block of cheese. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's All right. just what it looks that's like. Not in very there. healthy for monkeys, I don't think. No. So. That's, okay. That's what it. Okay, is we inside. open on Donald's brain. Okay, so uh, this idea. is a Donnie bad idea. Says, oh man, I just, I just like went. Been crazy at the Super Bowl party. I just I ate and drank. I thought that was behind me, like I thought that was the last time. I I really thought I had learned my lesson. You suck, and you'll never get this right. Oh no! Yeah, that's that's Donnie. Bad idea. Oh talking no! There's to a himself. monkey with a block of cheese block looking of cheese. at you. Yeah, you almost he's... said you went bananas, and then I was like, I bet that mon- monkey would prefer the banana. <laughs> monkey probably would rather eat bananas, <laughs> but I prefer the cheese. So. Oh man, that's a yeah. bummer, dude. Yeah, no. Oh, it really that's is. A, that's a sad snack right there. Yeah. Okay, but then there's healthy practice. Me, I'm not going to say that. Kathy thing again. Yeah. That's not that's not good. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it okay. really sounded weird coming from you. Okay, so this is this is growth mindset. This is the other version of it. Yeah. Now, which sounds better, everybody? Who do you want to hang out with more? Yeah. You know what? The Super Bowl was a blip. Oh, this is me. And are you in my brain right now? Is this the yeah? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, on two parts of the stage. It's like on one side, there's Donnie, sad snack, and then- This is still the- act one, mindset. Yeah. Well, now we've switched new new location, new scene inside Catherine's brain. Yeah, it's very well appointed, I must very say. It's well. my she shack. Yeah, no, okay. it's, got, it's got a lot of very well decorated aspects. Okay, so uh, this is a blip. I can learn from this. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Reducing the frequency. This is supposed to be what? the good ideas. You need to make it sound good, not like you're making fun of it. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't mean to give you notes. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So reducing the frequency, intensity, and duration of setbacks is good progress. Before I would have seen, okay, got the Super Bowl in yeah. there. And then, oh, Easter's coming. And then there's Labor Day. I'll just start in 2024. That was actually what I would do in the past is wait six months. So recovering on a Monday or a Tuesday is really great progress. Yeah. And you know what? I can be disappointed, but I do not need to be dramatic about this. I don't need to say I'm a dumpster fire or a trash panda or, you know, those sensational adjectives that you see on headlines for clickbait. That is an option. I can be, you know what? Ah, I did more than I wanted to. That wasn't a great choice, but you know what? I can recover. So end scene with me, like looking thoughtfully out a window with my hand on my (laughs) chin. Very well done. Very well done. I would clap, but that's probably really annoying on a podcast. Um, and, and, you know, and like Catherine said, I still engage in the behaviors that got me a hundred pounds overweight, but I do them much less often and with much less intensity and for a much shorter amount of time. And I've, I've wrapped my head around that mindset of, of not throwing up my hands and giving up when something like the Super Bowl or, or, you know, a two day you know, situation where I'm eating out. And I know now that the right path is to get right back on my plan and keep going and not quit and give up. Exactly. Okay, now I have to get back into character of, okay. uh, of uh, Act- 
Donnie bad idea. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Mr. Donnie bad okay. idea. Um, so uh, activity. So I've just indulged in the Super Bowl. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to punish myself with fitness. Yeah, I'm going to get to the gym and I'm going to work out really extra hard. Whoa, I didn't know you broed out so hard. I'm on... going to focus on calorie burning activities, man. <laughs> I will punish myself then. I'm going to work out until I can't stand up to make up for the calories I ate at the Super Bowl, man. Whoa, this is a whole new yeah. side of you. Yeah, that's uh, that's Donnie, bad idea, bro, bro yeah. out version. Wow. Yeah. I can't even compete. I'm exhausted. I think I just burned some calories just listening to you. No, like I, it took a lot of need. I was really like tensing my muscles. That's like, good. While I was, that's while isogenics I was or something that. like yeah. you your whole body. <laughs> nice right. job. Thank you. You know what? It's, Thank you. It, it, maybe you can dial it back a little bit on my side of the stage. Yeah. I'm going to come over here. Hi. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, scene, scene two. Yeah. Activity. Yeah. Uh, location. Catherine's brain. Me? Hey, you know what? Today would be some good time for gentle stretching. You know what I mean? Oh. I'm just gonna see. Movement makes my body feel better, and so I'm gonna focus on rest, but also purposeful movement because I know it makes me feel good. It clears my head and reminds me what is important to me. Yeah, and I think that is that is the the way to go. That is the healthy way to go. And deciding that you're going to, you know, to just exercise away the calories. First of all, we all know that you can't outrun a fork. Like yeah. no matter how much activity you do, um especially as we get older, I'm over 50 and I can't burn calories as quickly as I could when I was in my 20s. And and so even just you know, trying to exercise it out is is not only a bad idea, but probably a futile idea well, in the end. And I used to go to the gym and get on the treadmill, and all I would do is just look at the calorie burn right. on the treadmill. I'd be like, wow, 24 calories. Okay, well, that's like half a tablespoon of cream. Okay, now, like, how could I get... I've only burned 150 calories. Like, right. man, this isn't even worth it. I'm never going to burn a thousand calories, so I might as well just quit. But knowing that I feel better when I get in purposeful movement matters. And even if as soon as you return home from a trip or you're up late on Super Bowl Sunday and then maybe miss your workout in the morning, it doesn't mean you're ruined. Get back and do what you can with the energy that you have and then level up as you are able. Well, and and a side note, which we hadn't really discussed talking about too, is that if something is worth doing, it's worth doing it even a little bit. Yeah. Like even if you can't, you know, if, if you, the next day you're like, I can't do it. I can't do my full workout or I can't do my full exercise. Do a little bit, like even just, just like a very, very small portion of it to keep the habit yeah. going and to keep the momentum going. And then the next day, you know, maybe you go back to your full one rather than, than saying like, well, I skipped, I've broken my streak. I'm just going to give up entirely. Exactly. So the next scene takes us to the refrigerator, or I guess oh. you keep most refrigerators in kitchen. So uh, scene three, refrigerator, single spotlight on Donald Weigel from above, <laughs> blackness, and then the only light coming is from the refrigerator door, and go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm <laughs> so disappointed in myself. I ate so much at the Super Bowl. The only way I can make up for it is to eat nothing this week. Oh, that's a good idea because then it, you know, like it makes up whatever calories and I'm then if you just, just skip eating for a day, just that's Just going great. to starve myself for a couple of days and cut to a couple of days later, I'm so hungry, I'm going to binge eat everything in this refrigerator. Ah! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, that was me sort of reeling into madness over, uh, over that. I will go into a major deficit this week so that then it all balances itself out. But that doesn't work out for me. It doesn't doesn't work out. So now on the bright side, or the right side of the kitchen, I guess I should say, <laughs> is me. So, uh, and, and this is actually something that I've worked on, so ha, 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 ha. But you know what? I'm really full, and it feels uncomfortable, but that is normal. It is normal to process your feelings yeah. and feel the discomfort and move on from it. Um, this would be a really good 
time to work back to maintenance. Again, I experienced this myself, that deficit, you know, I was going to go into a big deficit, didn't work out for me, but maybe this is a time to just work on maintenance until you are ready to go back to a deficit. This is also a great time to Pump Pump up up the the volume. volume. Pump up the volume with fruits and veggies so that you still get that fullness without the caloric impact of chips and or dips. And I know I'm paraphrasing what you just said, but I, but you know, going back on your plan, but a normal amount of going back on your plan has always worked better for me than trying to starve myself. And it even, you know, not trying to starve myself before the Super Bowl. Like in the morning, I ate, I still ate very reasonable amount of food, but I had, I had, you know, a couple bowls of fruit. I had some cottage cheese. I, I ate light, but I still ate regular food so that I wasn't absolutely crazy starving when the calorie dense food arrived. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. So before we leave the kitchen scene, uh, just remember, too, that this is a great time to get rid of all of the leftover food that might not be serving you. You don't need the additional potato chips or dips. Just get rid of them. It's okay. No one – like everybody literally in the entire world right now has chips and dip, and they don't need you bringing it into the office or eating it. Oh, you got the value package. Don't worry about it. Toss it. If it is not serving you, get rid of it. You don't need to finish food that isn't serving your goals. I I know that we've had it drilled into us since we were little kids, like don't waste food, don't waste food, and I'm not advocating wasting food, but – it is better in the trash than it is inside of you for the next few days. Like you're not helping the problem by eating all of those high caloric foods for an extra couple of days and then gaining even more weight and making yourself more unhealthy. You're not helping solve the food wasting problem by doing that. Right. You don't, uh, what is it? You're either throwing it in the waste basket or it will end up on your waste. And it takes a lot more energy and effort to burn it off than it does just to not eat it. Absolutely. Okay, are we uh, we moving on to Act 4? Yes. Act 4. For some reason, we've done all of this, and then we're going back to the scale. The scale, exactly. So this is uh, this is Act 4. This is Mr. Donnie Bad Idea, and I did all of this eating over the weekend. The Super Bowl just happened. I ate so much. I need to get on the scale to punish myself, to really just see the evidence of how terrible I am. What a horrible- Trash panda. Should I add more bad words that you are? (laughs) What a terrible loser I am to eat like this. I'm going to get on the scale and I'm going to weigh myself multiple times over the next few days just just to keep rubbing it into myself over and over again about how terrible I am. Oh, yeah. And that's what I used to do. Yeah, for sure. Of course, the flip side of that, not to step on what Catherine's about to say, is the other thing I would do is I would continue to keep eating and then I would just avoid the scale yeah. so that I didn't have to see yeah. the evidence. Yeah. Mm- and and when I if I didn't step on the scale, then in my mind there was still a possibility that I hadn't gained any weight. <laughs> yeah, if you eat quickly enough, the calories don't know that they're happening. So that's yeah. just that's yeah. Just so that's the flip side bad idea. It's two sides of the same coin almost. All right, and okay, the the now, middle part of the coin, Kathy, healthy idea, healthy <laughs> idea, Kathy. Let's let's hear from you. The 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 middle idea. So there's a heads and a tails, and then there's like the creamy middle part. Is <laughs> <laughs> sure we make everything about food. Yeah. Um, Is, you know what? I'm going to pause weighing myself for a few days. I am going to make a plan to weigh in on Friday, which is actually what I did. Yeah. I know right now that I'm bloated. There's salty food, you know, water retention, whatever. I'm just going to pause for a few days because I don't feel emotionally ready to get on the scale. I know that I've gone over and it's not going to serve me emotionally. So I'll pause. There may be some of you who have a good relationship with the scale, who are comfortable with those fluctuations, who can get on each day and not be negatively prompted. But if you need a break, take a small break with the idea that you will weigh in on a specific day coming up. If you find that you are avoiding the scale, that is different than pausing the scale. So in my world, I paused 
until Friday. And I was up like a quarter of a pound, which like after four or five days, I was okay with that. But right. if I had weighed myself the day after when I was, you know, still full of treats, it probably would have been three or four pounds up. And I know I didn't gain three or four pounds in one day. That's not the issue. But just pausing might be a good idea that you can consider if you have a healthy practice in place. And again, paraphrasing what Catherine just said, I have found that I feel mentally the healthiest if I weigh myself just once, once a week. And so I've decided that's every Saturday morning. And my policy is that I do that regardless of what I've eaten, regardless of of how I feel like the week is going. Um, it, it gives me sort of an average of, of the week. And I ended up being, you know, I ended up, you know, weight neutral, essentially not losing or gaining anything this past week, which I felt pretty good about, um, after the indulgent weekend, but, you know, not punishing myself by trying to step on the scale a bunch of times. And, you know, I find that when I do it a lot, I get thrown off by, you know, I can be, I can you know, go up and down by a few pounds, like during a day, like depending on what I've just eaten or what time of day it is. And I don't, you know, I don't completely understand all of the science behind that, but, um, but it happens and it really mentally throws me off. So that, that once a day average, I think is the best for me. Exactly. Okay. Once a week average, sorry. So now we're at the final act. This is the big crescendo. This is the dance number. This is like all the, all the characters that you've met in the mindset, activity, food, and scale area come together and culminate into your overall mindset and the end result. So uh, we're going to start out with Donnie Weigel. Mr. Donnie, bad idea. Bad idea. What are the results? The results of of my my bad ideas with mindset, activity, food, and the scale are that I am stuck in a punishment cycle. I'm so angry that things have not gone back to normal immediately. And then I'm panicking and I'm searching for a new plan because obviously my plan isn't working. It's the plan's fault. And I just look for something new. And or maybe I just give up entirely for a while and decide I'm going to eat as much as I want all the time and get a diabetes diagnosis, which which is, which is what happened to me <laughs> in real life, <laughs> which Donnie, bad idea. Donnie, Donnie, Donald Weigel, yeah. me, actually, that is what I did and what happened. And uh, it uh, it led me down this path now yeah so uh so is this the all is lost moment isn't that what they call it the all is lost moment yes in a movie in a movie so the all is lost moment everyone's like what is gonna happen how are they gonna get out of this the the chandelier just fell on the star what's gonna happen i don't understand i don't understand either okay so but then the healthy practice approach comes and saves the day much like the Blue fairy in Pinocchio. Doesn't she come in and like save and the day at the end? Sort of? Sure, sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're going to be. She turns Pinocchio into a real you're boy. You're going and... to be a real boy with healthy practice mindsets. And here we go. I th- I'd like to think of you more like a superhero swooping in and uh, and giving good advice. Okay. Rather it. than and and allowing people to save themselves. Am I alighting or am I swooping? Am I like. Is, is it like a gentle... I think it's dealer's choice. I think you can okay. do whichever you want. Okay. Well, uh, 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 readers at home, <laughs> if you're... No, uh, <laughs> if you're you reading imagine, this podcast. Imagine uh, whatever you like me to swoop in or walk in or, or uh, rebound in. Uh, oh, just, yeah, rebound in. <laughs> just, <laughs> you have a mobile rebounder that's on. I have one strapped each. Didn't they used to have it's, those it's like... on skateboards. Those, those like moon <laughs> shoe things that for oh, kids yeah. where you could like squeegee, like squeak, squeak, squeak. Yeah, you okay. Okay. do that. So imagine me squeaking yeah, onto like the pogo stage. Like stick shoes or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. So imagine that. Um, so my healthy practices in mindset, activity, with food and the scale all result in an approach of seeing a setback, not as a failure, but as feedback. Ah. And it's, it's good to have feedback. All feedback is helpful because then it helps me know what I might consider doing in the future. What choice might I make the next time a setback might occur? Because I know for me, and and this is actually why I wrote all of these notes down, (laughs) because 
even after five years of this podcast. People may not believe this, but we do actually like plan these podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we we make notes, we we practice a little bit. Yeah. Like yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, not on the pogo feet th- moon shoes. No, thing. no, that, that was that was your improv training kicking yeah, in. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um but when we take a moment to really consider the actions that we take, the the mindset that we have, and the way that we plan, it really does matter. So in all of this, this was basically my own personal therapy session to say, the next time we have a day out where we're going over our calories, or we go on vacation, what I will do moving forward is I will plan on eating at maintenance the next day. Ah. I will plan on maybe not hitting my step goal, but getting in some purposeful movement. And by doing that, I'm also going to skip the scale for a couple of days and be fine with that. And the more I allow myself to give myself some space to recover, it's not about being perfect and sticking the landing the next day. It's not about returning to my best ideal self, yeah. but rather doing that on-ramp back to my healthy habits. It really does matter because, again, setbacks are normal. It's not proof that we're broken. It's not proof that, you know, everybody else can do it and I can't. Why not treat yourself well as you enjoy your actual real life with real events and food? Yeah. Knowing that setbacks are part of the process and we're living on a continuum moving forward. There are going to be more indulgences in the future and how we work on managing our mindset around all of that determines the success that we'll have in the future. So this is a setback. It is not the end of the story. And, uh, I say that that is a touchdown. It certainly is. Touchdown. touchdown. <laughs> also, end of play. Play. Yeah. <laughs> Overture. That's Curtain what they say lights. at the end of plays, right? I know it. we just saw one. Like, uh-huh. they come out on heights. stage and they go, end of play. <laughs> and oh, what heights will hit. Yeah. Come on, on with the show. This is it. Do you yeah. m- they I say imagine- that at the beginning. Though. Oh, they do. Okay. That was, I- I'm imagining myself as Daffy Duck, by the way. Yeah. You're no, I'm Daffy Duck. If really? anyone's Daffy Duck, okay. Daffy's always mad, at <laughs> <laughs> and I I have been eating a lot of carrots this week, so I guess that makes me a uh, Bugs Bunny. Clearly, me. Yeah, you're more of a Bugs type. Uh, also, what is part of the process is listening to this podcast. You did it, and we appreciate you doing it. We are grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much. All episodes of this podcast are still available for your listening pleasure wherever you find podcasts and also anytime on our website, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even on Super Bowl Sunday uh, at weonlylookthin.com. Yep. And if you are at weonlylookthin.com, you can click on that link for join our support group. To find out more about Wolt Place, We Only Look Thin Place is a Facebook-based accountability group for women. It is a great place for support um, after an indulgent weekend, after a getaway, or just on any normal day. Uh, We are not a weight loss plan, but we are a place for support and accountability regardless of the plan you are following. Uh, We have some subgroups uh, that have a lot of great activity. We've got people in all phases of their weight loss journey. So if you would like more information, again, click that link for join our support group. We have two subscription options, a monthly option with a three-day complimentary trial and a seven-day complimentary trial if you go with the three-month subscription. Absolutely. And you can also interact with us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at We Only Look Thin. And you can also interact with us via email. Uh, you can email us to weonlylookthin at gmail.com. We appreciate episode suggestions. We will answer questions. And uh, we have turned uh, many uh, listener um, emails into episodes. People write and they, they want to hear more about a particular topic or they feel like we, uh, we missed something on an episode that we did. And uh, we like hearing from you. 
Also, if you just want to send us a compliment, uh, we only look thin at gmail.com is a great way to do that. Yep. And if you have a couple of extra minutes and can head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a rating and a review, that would mean so much to us. Not only does it help boost our mood, but it also helps others find inspirational podcasts uh, if they're looking for a healthy nutrition podcast like ours. Yes. The Apple Podcast uh, rules the podcast world. And the more ratings and reviews we have, the uh, easier it is for people to find us. Um, Also, uh, you can just tell somebody about the show. Word of mouth is one of the best ways in which the show grows. Uh, If uh, if you feel like uh, somebody out there might benefit from our podcast or would enjoy it, uh, please mention it to them. Or if you're on a Reddit group like Lose It or a Facebook group like Lose Weight Eat Pizza or something similar, um, if giving us a shout out really helps us a lot in those scenarios. So we would appreciate it. Yep. So if you're surprised that Stephen King's Misery is in fact a rom-com, <laughs> just remember that Donald and I are an, an inspiration. inspiration. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.